We are here at Sebring 2013, and it's the third day of the show. The sun's starting to come out a little bit again. We're getting a chance to talk with Steve Bauer. Is it Bauer? Viewer. Steve Viewer and Troy Townsend. Uh, Troy Townsend. Get all the names right here, all the, all the important players. And we want to talk to both gentlemen because we are we've discovered that Steve is kind of the car expert, and Troy is, well, he's an expert on a lot of it, but he does all the flying. So he's in the pilot seat right now. And Troy, what kind of changes have you made to the aircraft uh, in, in so far as the flying parts? We can I see some physical differences, the nose cowling and so forth. Uh, talk, let's talk about that part first and then we'll go to flying stuff. Okay, we've, we've streamlined a lot of things, just kind of taken them to the next level. Made things a little easier. We moved the trimmers up on the dash, so ah, okay. so um, is one thing. It's really easy to trim this in flight now. Um, we've got okay, so these trimmers here, uh, powered parachute of course, works by right. pulling the trailing edge down. Right. Those are uh, uh, a, a literal trim in the sense that they fix into position and hold That's it right. there for you. That's right. Uh, so, for example, in a crosswind condition or something. Right, and once you get this craft in trim, it pretty much flies straight and level no matter what you do for the day. But um, it just, we wanted to make things very easy access. So we've got a little more room. We've stretched the vehicle because some of our larger customers were big, long guys. So we've stretched it a little bit. Seemed pretty roomy before, <laughs> but you've made it even more it's so. More Is that roomy. it? Okay. Um, the um, backup controls now are a lot more intuitive. We went to this um, this hang yeah, we're seeing hanging the pedal system now, where we did have a slide system. Ah, okay. So yeah. it's it's a lot more. I'm guessing that's smoother then. For too, powered isn't? parachute guys, it feels much more like a powered parachute now. So and these are just all manual backup controls because you still you still use the wheel you for still everything. Just fly it with the wheel and the throttle. You know. Um, we have um, a little bit more powerful engine now. We went from the 2.2 liter Subaru 120 horsepower to the 2.5 liter, and it, we're making about 190 horsepower. 190 now. horsepower. That's right. Yeah, I think that makes this the most powerful LSA <laughs> on the planet. Then, it could of be. course, I realize it's also got to do car it's duty. It's probably so. the most powerful and the slowest. <laughs> a good combination. Really powerful, really slow. But you do everything in a powered parachute at about the same speed. That's right. This, this has an airspeed of about 40 miles an hour, which is a, quite a bit faster than yeah. your normal powered parachute. Well, is that partly because of wing loading here? Is it's the amount of weight loaded. he's carrying? It's the wing loading, but we designed it that way. We wanted to be cut, be able to cut through just a little bit more than a powered parachute. And you do that by lowering the profile a little well, bit? Well, we have a really nice elliptical wing. Okay, you know, so you are through. using elliptical that's as opposed right. to the square canopy that's, that's more right. common. This that's has a little right. taper to it, okay. Uh -huh. um, and of course, we have um, our mast system, our mast and spar system that um, makes it a lot easier to go flying. So the idea behind the mass system, if I understand, correct me if I don't, is that on a power parachute, when you come in and land, everything is all where it's supposed to be until you slow down right. and then it sort of droops to the ground because it has right. to. Right. And if you're, you know, with the missionary mission of this aircraft in the first place, you may be landing in some places where you don't want your wing dragging on the ground. That's, That's right. That's the point, is it? Our experience in Africa and Ecuador with power parachutes Hiding, taking, you got to drag the chute a little bit, a few feet. Well, we just rip them up. We just rip them up. So one of our goals was for the wing to never touch the ground. So we just hoist it up like a sailboat sail, comes horizontal, and if there's any headwind at all, about three knots, it'll start pressurizing. So the back end the, the, will come The canopy up. filling up. That's right. It'll it'll pressurize. So um, you're in. You're in a lot better shape to take off than if it's back behind you on the ground. Yeah, sure. You know, uh, I've flown a few powered parachutes as a very novice pilot of them, and it's always a little disconcerting to have that leap forward and then the stop when the canopy inflates, uh -huh. and then you got to look up to see, and that strikes me as a possible distraction. I kind of like the idea of it just yeah. being up there where it's supposed to be. So the we have a nice sunroof here, so basically... Ah, this is how you're looking through yeah. to make sure you got full so inflation when I'm taking here. off, you know, I'm giving a little bit of throttle. I'm looking it out, make sure things are pressurizing well. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, know, you got I can good upward see, I got visibility. great here. view of the wing. And as soon as I see real good pressurization, I can just give it the throttle and go. 
Sounds great. Yeah. Let's shift gears here. Talk to Steve a little bit now about the car part of this, because it flies. And to any pilot, that's the most interesting part. But that's not the only interesting part. You got some changes to the car part of the vehicle now too. Well, we've gone through a few different designs on the A arms on the front end. The, the whole geometry issue of the of the A arms is is quite involved. You know, the higher tech cars have, have really. You know, some really um, um, strict and fancy geometry. We try to keep it simple because we still have to get it in the air. We can't build it like we would like to do for cornering and stuff like that. Sure. So we've gone through a few changes you there. got to keep it fairly light even though it's Our capable to be here. constant battle, whether it's, uh, whether, it's, whether it's here or in the car, <laughs> you're fighting the weight issue. So the two things I get asked most in building them from Troy and the other guys is, how much does it cost and how much does it weigh? <laughs> Always so. considerations in the world of flying. We are after so. both to be lower and it's not easy. Right. And then I guess Troy mentioned our 190 horse 2.5 liter Subaru. It's As far as the car part, it's really fast on the ground. Well, I have seen some and, and thrilled at your videos that I saw some time ago about this thing. This is not a delicate little machine that you got to kind of drive sort of carefully and don't go off road or anything. You guys have been tearing around in all kinds of off-road conditions which suits the original mission of the vehicle if it's, right. it's going to be out in the rough conditions and you need the mast up there for that reason you also need a vehicle that's capable of that right. why don't we go in back and have a look at the engine a little more all right so now we're back at the tail end of the aircraft and the car and what i see here steve is a lot of hardware work to make this magic happen to go from being one to the other. Uh, you've right. got a, a, a belt drive system here and this is part of the car drive, is it? Right, it's called the CVT, Continuously Variable Transmission, and that's basically our automatic transmission. This pulley happens here... happens all right here between right, these two units. It happens all right here. We okay. speed the engine up, it's a centrifugal clutch. The top, the top pulley gets bigger and the bottom pulley gets smaller. So the more you speed the car up, the faster you go down the road. Just basically... You don't have like to do anything. Auto, you, don't, you just, just step press on the, the foot pedal. It's, it's, it's exactly like an automatic transmission. Wow. So, Very cool. Some beautiful machining to achieve that. Is this your creation here? Or um, there's were you a team. Able to buy this? There's a team of us. Uh, we do buy the the clutch itself, but all the shafting work is all uh, our design and that we have made. Um, now we're so. applying a lot of power here. 190 horsepower. We heard so. That's a lot of juice to, for these systems to handle back here. Yes, it is, and so it's a it's a specially, yeah, specially made clutch. You know, it's it's snowmobile type or style. They but use that kind of technology, and they use that technology in snowmobiles and UTVs and ATVs and stuff like that. But this one is special made for us because we're a car and we're a little bit heavier, so it's a little stronger. I guess to get into more detail. Uh, snowmobile engines rev higher so they don't need as many I see, okay. centrifugal What kind of RPMs weights. are we running at in this particular engine? In this engine range? our max RPM is 5300 RPM. Yeah. So cruising down the road at, at 65 miles an hour, we're about, about 2,800 RPM. Okay, so that's the car part of it now. Yeah. But, and you've got another belt drive, I see, that goes up to the top here, but you can't run them both at the same time, can you? Right. No, we don't. It's either ground drive or prop drive. Okay, so kind of like a ground adjustable prop. you got a little bit to do before you make the transition. Right. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes to go from driving to flying from and from flying to driving. Driving. Can you show us you know, where that action happens here, Steve? Right now it's in ground drive. The ground belt is, is hooked directly to the crankshaft. Okay. So to go from to flying, we just take this collar and shift it back here and just move that a little bit. It slides in gear. Now the prop is engaged uh, to the engine and the ground drive is Oh, I free. see that's all loose now. So. so that just spins free on bearings inside that pulley. That so this uh, action takes, so, now you did it real quick there because you've got it prepped up for to show people and stuff, but it's 10 or 15 minutes is all. Not just that. I mean, you got to do the wing as well, right. of course. Yeah. That's getting the wing out. Oh, that includes everything. Uh, that okay. includes everything. That's a pretty fast transition. So. It really is, and, and the more you do it, the faster it goes. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we've, someone who's practiced it could probably do it in about five minutes. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so that's pretty quick. Now, 
You don't have the wing up today, of course you wouldn't do that, but the wing is stored right up here, is wing it not? is stored right up here. We've got it displayed today as both in flying mode with our mast system up in the air, but also in ground mode with the mast system sits right here as we're driving down the road. It's stored right here. This is it's in this bag. Yes, the mast. Because you can't stored. pass under a lot of overpasses with well, that thing. Well, they'd have, yeah, you'd have a little trouble and make for a bad day. <laughs> and then the parachute is stored right up on top here. So. So you're carrying everything you need with you. Everything we need. And you're with driving us. down the road like all the way from Florida, Dunellen, where you're located, up to Oshkosh. Yes, sir. Which I heard was an interesting drive because. Every time you stop for gas, you had a half hour exposition. Well, a half to hour to an hour because it attracts a crowd. <laughs> I can't imagine why. I don't know why. But you are carrying your whole package anywhere you go. Yes, sir. Now, tell me a little bit about the production plans of the company. When we did our first video, I think two or three years ago, uh, the company was so new at that that you really hadn't decided that. How's that going right. today, Steve? We are in limited production. This is our fifth production model that we've built. Um, we built uh, four of them are up and flying. This one hasn't been inspected yet, um, but uh, it's airworthiness. The other, the other inspection. four, right, is airworthiness and DOT inspection. Oh, so I was going to ask that. You do have to go get somebody else's approval beside FAA. Right. Huh? Yeah, this machine is DOT road legal and FAA certified. So we have to get talking about get two masters. You got to go serve here. <laughs> That's, uh, that's tougher duty so, than many of them. But in, in Florida here, it's, uh, it's a kit car classification, or in Florida they call it assembled from parts. So, And that means you do not have to meet all of the same things that a car does with windshield wipers and mirrors and yeah. crash worthiness and the same and stuff. And each state has a little bit of the different uh, ah, qualifications and requirements. You know, some some states might require, a, you know, a, some kind of a bumper or a windshield wiper. In Florida does not. Okay. Um, so, and, and we'll work with the customer, whatever. Wherever they're going to be. Wherever they're going to be. Yeah, typically you won't drive this thing from six or eight states away. It won't be that kind of a beast, I'm assuming. Exactly. I mean, that's not what it's designed for, but I mean, we've done it and it works. <laughs> you know, just to prove our drive system. Sure. And that's what we did. That was a pretty road, convincing story when you did that. With our road trip to Oshkosh. So, so we uh, hopefully teased the people with a bit of information about the vehicle and its amazing capabilities and by the way it's a two-seater or three-seater in back but when you're flying only one in one right right unless it's unless you certify it amateur bill uh, then you could go then with more can go with three but then you have to be a private pilot uh, okay yeah. so it's possible so, anyway yes. all right so some more information uh, tell us about the website we'll put it up on the screen for all the folks yeah. watching this Web on their computer website is maverickLSA.com we have lots of videos of it driving and flying. So. All righty. Well, Take thanks for luck. talking with us today. I have information about the aircraft, and hopefully I get a flight on this thing pretty soon. I'm angling for it. That will be available on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining us today.